committed. I welcome you all to another exciting session about our industry event management. Today I'm going to talk about risk management. And since risk management is a vast topic, there are a lot of aspects into it. We're going to start with types of risk. So in today's session, we're going to talk about types of risk. And then on a later session, we're going to talk about uh, the safety norms. And then we're going to talk about risk management and control. So these are the different aspects of risk, uh, event risk management. And let's begin with types of risk in events. Allow me to share a small presentation. So as I mentioned, uh, we're going to touch upon types of uh, risk today. So after this session, you'll be able to get a clarity about uh, the importance of risk management and also the different types of risk associated with the event industry. So what is risk management? So as the word goes, it is defined as a possibility of loss, injury, or any other adverse unwelcome circumstances. So we all keep talking about different. So risk is there everywhere. Risk is not only in the event industry. Risk is there every day when we travel. There is a lot of risk. Uh, the uh, when we ride a bike or when we drive a car, there is risk. Uh, or when we walk down the stairs, there is a risk. Is uh, something like uh, it's a part and parcel of our life. But how risk in the event uh, sector makes a difference uh, is what we are going to evaluate here and what we are going to talk in detail. And this mostly comes from something risk is mostly uh, associated with things which is uncertain. We don't know. If we know something, we will take measures to it. But something most uncertain or it could be it could lead to multiple uh, problems. It could lead, uh, lead into accidents. It can lead to natural calamities, disasters. So risk is there everywhere. Few things which is there in our hand, few things which is not there in our hand. Yes. So it can also be measured and expressed as a probability of not being able to achieve defined goals of the event duty. So how risk would affect an event is, I'm sure as I told uh, in my previous sessions that um, every event has an objective, every event has a certain uh, numbers, ROI or goals to be achieved or uh, to be reached in that event. And uh, if there is a risk involved in it, it will uh, kind of um, prohibit us uh, from achieving those goals or uh, defined results of that event. So let's go into detail into types of risk. So here, um, I will first of all uh, categorize risks into two main categories. The first one is potential external risk and the next one is risk linked with event operations. Now, external risk is something that is uh, not in our hand, uh, that is subject to could be act of God or could be, uh, you know, um, could be terrorism, uh, could be uh, natural disasters like a cyclone or typhoon, something of that kind, something which is not in your control, something which you couldn't have uh, anticipated or something which you couldn't have predicted. Okay, then there is something called risk linked with event operations. So this is something uh, based on uh, the uh, production that we do, based on the measures that we take within the event scenario. So if there is enough uh, measures not taken, then what are the risks linked to it? So we'll go one by one in detail. Uh, so let us first get into details of potential external risk and the types of risk that comes under potential external risk. So the first one, which I already mentioned, is stress due to natural disaster. We do a lot of events. Um, throughout the year there isn't any like we don't uh, do events as per season other than festivals like could be you know uh, the um, ganesha festival or any this, those events are uh, festival based events and i'm sure they are seasonal but there isn't anything like we will not do events on june july or we will not do events in december we do events throughout the year and now uh, there are a few things that we do as per climatic conditions. So we know that normally in the month of June, July, August, it is rainy. So we avoid outdoor events. So those are things. But disasters, what I'm talking about, is one uh, simple example is uh, the tsunami that happened uh, in India, um, in the south coast, uh, in the, the Bay of Bengal, um, I think a lot of years back. Um, and uh, I still uh, have a very fresh memory of that uh, because one of our vendors uh, did an event at one of the five-star properties there. Uh, they had finished their 31st uh, New Year event. They had uh, uh, just finished the event and they went back to room to take some rest and they decided they will uh, pack uh, the uh, equipment next day in the morning and then leave back uh, to you know uh, Bangalore. But then what happened at, uh, that night, tsunami struck at that place. Uh, the entire um, resort was wiped out. All the equipment uh, went into the sea. Uh, so that's what. So a few things which is not. But fortunately, what happened? The event was over. So there was not much uh, loss to the life because people were already in the room or had left that venue. 
So yes, now uh, natural disasters can be anything, you know, it could be earthquake, it could be hurricane, storm flood. So these things are something which is completely out of uh, your control. Uh, and we can't, cannot blame anybody on that. So uh, you should always uh, plan to do events in such uh, locations where these things might not affect much. But yes, as I told you, earthquake can happen anywhere. So yeah, this is a risk that is due to natural disaster. So you can avoid places which are prone to earthquakes. So avoid such places. Um, act of violence or risk to personal safety. So act of violence can include anything. So, uh, for example, if uh, there is a, a political uh, thing that uh, outbreak ha happens, so if there is some verdict that has happened and because of which uh, there is a huge uh, um, uh, people gang up or people hooligans are forming huge groups and uh, are going on a rampage out on the streets. And uh, unfortunately, if they are on the street where your event is happening or if they are outside the venue where you're doing the event, so they might block the road. There is no movement of traffic going to happen. People who are coming to event might get uh, affected. People also might get uh, no hit. So it has happened, you know, uh, at times uh, when um, uh, in India there has multiple violence in terms of whatever reasons. It could be political reason. It could be uh, a reason due to anything. I would not want to name few, but yes, as you all have seen uh, multiple times, uh, Section 144 has been imposed uh, due to various reasons. So during that time, what happens is that uh, your event might get disrupted or it might get stopped or it might uh, you know, get disrupted for temporary for a few hours till the police brings the entire uh, law and order into control. So these are something is called as act of violence. The other one is theft material loss during transportation crime of opportunity. So um, when uh, we do uh, some events at different places, so like for example, if I'm doing an event in Chennai, I'm doing an event in Hyderabad, or I could be doing something in Sri Lanka, I could be doing something in Singapore. So there could be some material that we use that we have transport from here to that place, or it could be by road, by sea, or by air. And any damage that happens or any delay that happens uh, due to your paperwork not being complete. So that is uh, something I would say internal, but something that happens externally would be, for example, the ship that is carrying it, uh, you know, uh, it derails the, the train that is carrying it derails or a flight which is carrying meets with an accident or a bus. So anything or uh, it gets uh, stolen. So what happens to that? Uh, on the way, if there is uh, some uh, robbery that happens, uh, people, uh, there, there could be a potential uh, attack of uh, the bandits or uh, anybody who will attack those uh, truck and they take over all the material, anything that can happen. So any loss or any risk that is associated in terms of transportation of material can also be uh, treated as an external risk. Next is terrorist attack. So this has uh, been uh, something uh, on top of uh, everybody's mind uh, when they're doing events uh, mostly associated with uh, uh, government institutions or uh, uh, big private uh, MNCs. Uh, the reason being, uh, this is uh, something which is picked up over the last 15, 20 years uh, after the uh, attack that happened at uh, 26-11 and uh, uh, the 9-11 attack that happened, all these things. So uh, all the hotels follow this as a very strong protocol uh, that um, the venue is secured as per uh, the uh, measures. And um, bigger events uh, like, uh, for example, at times of World Cup or at times of Olympics or Commonwealth, uh, these are most uh, prone uh, because of the a uh, large number of audience who participate and uh, a good target audience which the terrorists uh, might think of. So these uh, uh, events are also prone to such external risk, which is terrorist risk. Um, negative media coverage or negative publicity of the event. So uh, this is also, this is not a, a big um, impact that happens mostly, but yes, it can happen is, uh, for example, which has happened recently is that you plan an event, you, put, uh, you call a certain kind of an artist and an artist is involved in a controversy, uh, you know, it could be about something that has been, I'm sure. The reason why I'm giving you this as an example, because I'm sure you would have heard about it, that we call an artist for an event and he's performing and he is involved in some kind of a Twitter comment or something that he has done. So there's already a negative publicity that is going against that uh, artist or the performer, and that is automatically impacting your event. That reason being, for example, uh, you are calling an uh, ex, uh, an artist called A. I don't want to name any artist, I called this A, and is already uh, going through a lot of uh, negative publicity on Twitter, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and all things happening. And uh, uh, he's planning to attend, and your ticket sales, what you were expecting is 5,000 ticket sales, but it is not happening because people are scared to come to that event, that thinking, uh, there could be an attack from the mob or could be hooligans who will be attacking for his comment that he has done. This has happened off late uh, many times. Uh, so this is another thing. Or uh, the artist already has a potential uh, exposure to negative publicity. So those things uh, might happen. 
It could be also about some foreign artists who are coming to India who might not be uh, well accepted here. So those things also might work as an external risk. Changes and delays. Um, so what happens, this is as a common thing I would say uh, uh, happens uh, when you keep on changing the dates of the event, you call for an artist, you do a, a, a commercial show, uh, you keep on changing the date every second month, every third month, you keep postponing the date. So what happens is that once it happens, once in a while, it's okay, people will understand. And if it is the reason because there's elections happening, or if it is the reason because there is uh, an, um, any kind of national disaster that has happened recently, so people are kind of coping up from that, or any major political things that have happened, then people will understand. But every time you keep on extending the date because without any strong reason, then that also might uh, cause an external risk, which will prohibit you from achieving the goals of that particular event. Now, let's come to the second category, which I spoke about, which uh, mostly is something which is in your hand, which is in your control, which can be averted by doing uh, a proper uh, setup of management. We will talk about how to avoid and how to uh, take care of things in a later, a second part of our uh, uh, risk management. But here, I'll purely accustom you guys about different types of risk that is there. So once you get to know what are the types of risk, then we'll also talk about remedies for it, or like how we can, um, like precautions for it, how we can avoid and uh, make best out of it. So the first thing is poisoning or contamination of food and water. So a lot of events uh, in India, I'm sure, uh, is associated with uh, food counters or a food mela or a, a dedicated a food, uh, you know, uh, food area that has been there. So contamination of food. So it could be the water supply that is coming there. It could be contaminated due to any kind of leakage that has happened. Or uh, it could be uh, the bottles in which uh, the food or water has been carried are already been contaminated. This can also lead to... Um, a very uh, strong uh, uh, impact on the event in terms of like people getting sick and then they boycotting the event. If it's a two, three day event, they might not turn up on the second day because of the problem that they have faced. Or it could be also due to uh, if there is some kind of a, a gas leak or something that has happened in that area uh, from the food area and that causes a lot of uh, uh, problem to the, uh, to the audience. It could be, for example, if there is aero show happening or if it's, there is a big defense show happening, aero show. So uh, there is like, there could be anything that can happen there uh, in terms of your food and safety that or could be the air that you breathe. Some people are not uh, are prone to like they're not accustomed to outdoor events um, or strong noises that are going to come. So the best way is uh, to maintain packaged food and water at event areas and uh, also check uh, the uh, quality of the food and uh, water that has been served in those areas. As I mentioned, we're going to talk about remedies at a later stage. But yes, right now I'm going to talk about what are the types. Financial risk due to low ticket sale, lack of sponsorship, over expenditure. As I mentioned, we're going to now talk about risks that are related to our event operations. So here, what happens is that um, we anticipate, so if we are planning a very big show, uh, and it is for like 1,000 tickets to be sold, and we have a target of achieving, uh, for example, the total revenue of the event is 1 CR, and we say that 50 lakhs will be achieved through sponsorship, 50 lakhs will be achieved through ticket sales, etc., etc., this is what we target, but if we didn't market it well, if we didn't sell it well, and we're not able to get that, that also could lead to uh, a certain risk, or as uh, in the beginning I told, it will prohibit you from achieving the objective of the event. So what happens is that uh, your event will have certain uh, operational expenses. So if you, uh, when you're closer to the event, you know how many tickets you've sold and uh, how much sponsorship you've generated. Um, in case you're running short of money, so you might have to trim down on the cost in, in terms of execution. So that might not uh, give the desired uh, effect that you anticipated that you wanted to give it to the audience. So this is financial risk. And also, it might uh, you would have thought that uh, out of this event, we'll make a profit of 30, 40 lakhs for the amount of uh, effort that we put over a period of three to six months. Uh, but uh, if you are not done your sales well, uh, that might also impact your uh, cash reserves. And you might also have to pull up some money from your own pockets to make sure the event is executed uh, to justify to the other people who have taken the tickets or who are a part of that event. Now, the next one is risk related to crowd, loss of life, injury due to accidents, stampede. So these kind of events happen uh, in a public event uh, where uh, in a registered event, it is very, very, uh, I would say, just quite negligible to happen. But in an event where it is open to public, these incidents uh, are prone to happen or uh, have happened, I would say, uh, or I've written events, at least one or two events have uh, experienced this where uh, 
crowd goes out of control probably because of uh, the celebrities who drop in there or probably because of uh, the huge demand uh, at the event that is going to happen so uh, many such events are could be the uh, you know the ganesha festival uh, pandals that happen in bombay or it could be in anywhere in bangalore or delhi anything such uh, events which is of public importance or the ram lila madan event that happens so a lot of people come there uh, a lot of stampede uh, happens uh, so these things have to be taken care of. it has to be planned well even events such as like kumbh mela and all where lakhs and lakhs of people attend uh, the snake boat race that happens in uh, kerala so thousands and lakhs and uh, people who turn out uh, where you don't really uh, you know it is in thousands but you don't know the exact number you don't know who's going to come how so it's all about how you manage uh, the complete uh, flow of the crowd there is what matters in uh, places like this and this can also lead to stampede or if there is some emergency that is happening it is difficult to evacuate people from there so yeah so this is something a risk that is uh, caused due to crowd or loss of uh, injury risk to surrounding and facilities like fire electric gas supply stage pyrotechnic now every event has um, different uh, as i told you there are one thousand or ten thousand items uh, that is will put together to put uh, make an event very successful or uh, to um, give you the experience that you have expected so there are uh, things like um, um, a stage show might have uh, some pyro what is pyro pyro is a firework related uh, act so if it is not uh, taken care of well if it is not done well so there could be uh, one of the events in mumbai had that uh, like it was a government event and the stage caught fire and a lot of celebrities were sitting in the first row so that was quite a big mishap that happened uh, so yeah things can go wrong uh, not definitely uh, uh, in your control but yeah, it could have been averted if you have taken proper uh, fire and safety uh, protocol uh, if you have fo followed the safety measures and uh, there is uh, some uh, sops that we have to do in terms of fire and safety that is one and other things could be the electrical uh, thing short circuits that can happen again those things also can be averted by having good cabling having good uh, electrical company who will do the cabling in a proper way uh, no uh, looping of uh, wires in between with uh, loose connections and all those things yeah all these things and uh, stage safety uh, could be in terms of pyro or it could be in terms of the trussing that you do so all these things so this also is an uh, this is something i would say is a nightmare of a production uh, person or a person who's involved in operation it is um, one of the uh, it is their more utmost uh, duty to ensure safety in all aspects of the stage could be from fire safety electrical connections or uh, gas supply anything that is required for that event it also could be you know uh, we use the smoke machines or the smog machines so the kind of liquid that you load onto those machines and that what they emit if it is going to be poisonous and there could be uh, some artist or somebody who is on the stage might faint because of it so yes these are the risks that is surrounding to the facilities next is the collapse of the communication systems so what happens uh, is the collapse of a kind of communication system when we talk about it is uh, it's for for example on a bigger event you have at least 30 40 50 people who are managing the event in different different areas so somebody at the backstage somebody at the front stage somebody at the audience somebody at the console uh, some people at the security some people at the gates so there are different set of people working across the venue and these people are all communicating through walkie talkies or different modes of communication that they adapt to that particular event or venue so or it could be uh, the communication amongst the volunteers and everybody so there are two types so one is the active communication which you are doing with your uh, crew members and everything for the smooth functioning of event other one is a passive communication passive communication is for example um, you should also have in a venue which you are doing a very big show you should have proper communication where the restrooms are where the uh, safety exits are uh, where the fire exit is where the uh, entry to the venue is where the exit is where is the emergency exit everything so uh, bigger venues uh, i would say in terms of uh, five star properties and everything those uh, uh, layer plans have already been printed and there at the at the entrance so people tend to notice it or look at it or in some of the events what we do is we print uh, and hand out and give it to them in their docket or the handbag so that they know at times of emergency where is the exit where is the restrooms etc etc all the information is given so that is passive communication and active communication so any failure in this uh, communication systems will also cause risk to the event financial loss in terms of over expenditure penalties and litigation that's another type of uh, risk uh, so over expenditure happens is uh, that if you don't um so whenever we do costing you always have to work with a 5 to 10 percent buffer it depends if you are working on a long term project if you are working something which is 6 months or a year down the line 
there could be some changes in policies or there could be certain uh, inflation that's going to happen so your transport might increase uh, or probably you would have anticipated current rate for flight bookings but when you're booking the things might change so yeah all these things it could uh, shoot up so always keep that buffer so that you don't come into that uh, risk of over expenditure second thing is penalties and litigations yeah this might happen probably in terms of transportation the venue that you selected has some uh, problem that has happened or it's an open venue you might have to uh, spend a lot more on the government permissions uh, litigations because you wouldn't have uh, for example if you didn't follow pro proper a protocol of doing securing the venue or doing the underground cabling etc then there are some fines from the department so these are the another risk which can begin and this also comes under the, uh, the purview of the production or the operation guy in terms of taking care of penalties and litigations so these are different types of risk uh, that uh, is related to event operations the other one we're going to talk about is legal risk now uh, legal risk can happen um, probably with your vendors uh, because they had a certain contract that you're following with them and as the a legal risk could also be in terms of securing the venue there's certain paperwork that you have to have to be done but you don't have done the legal risk could also be about obtaining licenses so we have multiple licenses you know when we do went from liquor license uh, to um, novex uh, ppl etc which is for playing the music uh, then uh, when you're doing events in Mumbai, you have to take uh, from the uh, power company and then you have to, in case you're using generator, then you have to take license. You have to also take permission and license from the fire department. So multiple levels of licenses that we have to take. And if not, then we will also get ourselves, uh, one is risking our audience and our company and at the same time uh, putting ourselves under a big legal uh, hassle that we might have to face. So yes, legal risk also forms a very important part of the risk related to event operations. Risk related to intake of alcohol and drugs. This has happened in a lot of events where um, by default, like there are a lot of uh, uh, events that like could be some but no big concerts have uh, uh, liquor partners on board. And I'm sure uh, liquor is served because uh, people uh, about the age of 21 or 25 are allowed in that event. Um, but what happens is that uh, some people might go a little overboard in terms of consumption of alcohol. or uh, That could be certain leakage wherein people would have carried some drugs along with them. Uh, and uh, they go on to overdose of drugs or uh, overconsumption of alcohol and then they start uh, becoming a problem or a nuisance at the venue to other audience who are enjoying the show or enjoying the event. Uh, so this also could be another risk. So proper measures have to be taken care. I'm sure uh, when we're doing an event for about 5, 10, 20,000 people, we will not be able to keep an eye on each and every person. Then in that case, we would need 10,000 security people. But then with their proper security and measures have to be put so that we uh, maintain uh, the uh, decorum of the event and also be able to control the event and have a smooth functioning without causing any damage or any kind of nuisance to the other audience. In our next session, we will we'll, uh, discuss in detail in terms of remedies or the safety norms that we can uh, take up to overcome uh, this kind of risk. Um, but I'm sure when, I, uh, when we discussed about this type of risk, you would have already come up with your own ideas as to how I can safeguard that area, how can I safeguard the stage area. So um, as I uh, began this session, there were two main categories as I told, uh, potential external risk and uh, uh, risk related to event operations. External risk is definitely not in our hand, uh, terrorist attack or it could be natural disasters. Those things are completely unpredictable. This is definitely not in our hands. Uh, but event uh, risk related to event operations is totally in our hand. And it is uh, the, the main, um, um, I would say, uh, the, not I would say, the responsibility of the event operations team to uh, do a proper Reiki, do a proper evaluation of the, uh, the uh, event before taking it up and plan things accordingly. With this, I hope uh, this uh, session has given you more clarity on types of risk. Uh, we'll uh, talk about uh, the um, safety norms and uh, things required under risk management in our next session. Thank you all. Have a great day.